let's talk about writing RPGs with chapters. It doesn't really matter what kind of RPG you're writing, whether it's tabletop or computer or massively multiplayer, it's going to have chapters, it's going to have episodes. The reason for that is pretty simple. RPGs are huge. You have to break the story down into bite-sized chunks. Rather than trying to avoid that, I think it's best if we understand how to make those bite-sized chunks work. How do we write with chapters in mind? So let's talk about it. Let me give you a fairly typical example. There's a fantasy RPG, and the first chapter is that you are wrongfully imprisoned uh, on an island with an evil, evil warden. So you have to fight the warden, free the prisoners, hooray! And then you move on to the second chapter, which is all about the sea. And you have to unify the pirate kings as they fight against the evil sky dragon that is darkening the ocean. Hooray! You do that. Then you move into the third chapter, where there is an evil crusade by an evil empire, and you have to show that their, their pope is actually a demon or whatever. Typical fantasy story stuff, right? But if you look at this, and you're a writer, alarm bells might be going off in your head because these things are completely unconnected. There's no connective tissue between these chapters, which might worry you. I know that it might worry you because nearly every RPG is written to forcefully connect the first chapter with the second chapter and the second chapter with the third chapter and so on, even if it destroys those chapters. Let me give you an example. You win! Hooray! You have finally defeated the evil sky dragon that was uh, causing the whirlpools all around the world. You're victorious, and here's a sky dragon lying dead. Bah. Awesome! Perfect! We're so cool! Let's go hang out with the pirate kings! Grog's on me, boys! And then, before you can go to the grog with the pirate kings, an evil new villain shows up and goes, Mwahahaha, I see you have defeated my dragon just as I planned. Mwahahaha, I am far more stronger than my dragon was. Mwahahaha, see you next chapter. Mwahahaha. This happens all the friggin' time, and it is the worst way to write the end of a chapter. This ends the chapter badly, it begins the next chapter badly, and it does not generate any sort of emotional connection to the new villain. It is just bad. So why are the chapters written like this? Well, the answer is Saturday morning cartoons. Or comics, whichever you prefer. If, uh, if Goku decides that he's going to punch Vegeta, and that's how this particular episode ends, with Goku punching Vegeta, and Vegeta's like, Oh no, I got punched! If the episode ends with Goku then going, uh, No worries, my friends. Everything is fine now. Mwahaha. Good job, everybody. Let's have cake. Then there's really no reason to come back next week. At least that's the theory, right? There's a whole week between episodes, and the only thing that the player, that the audience is going to want to come back for next week is their vague memories of what happened last week, which is why every single cartoon ends with a cliffhanger. Aha, I have defeated Vegeta. Everything is fine now, my friends. Oh no, Goku, something's wrong with the planet Namek. We better go to the planet Namek. And Goku is like, that's right, the planet Namek. I forgot all about their critical problem. Let's go save planet Namek starting next week at the same time and the same channel. This is how children's shows are written because they are episodic. They need to lure the child back for the next episode. RPGs are not episodic because there's no reason to stop playing. Players do play in large chunks, but those chunks don't line up with the same places that you would normally consider the end of an episode. If you defeat the Sky Dragon, and then you have your party, you just can keep playing. You move into the next chapter. You don't simply stop playing at the end of a chapter, you just keep going. If you're doing a tabletop game where there are noticeable breaks, there's a lot of social pressure to come back in the next week. Everybody wants to hang out with their friends, so you come back for the next session next week. You do not have to lay the hooks in quite so heavily. Now, hooks are not a bad idea. Feel free to put hooks in. But I think it's important to understand that the end of a chapter has a role. There's a reason why you had this chapter, and it's critical that you achieve that first. That should be your main goal. 
So what was the goal of your chapter? Well, if you are a competent writer, then that victory over the chapter boss, bleh, that is the emotional high point of the chapter. Not necessarily you know, the most positive emotions, but just the most emotions in general. You feel triumphant. Yay, we finally did it. Dun, 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 dun. Or you feel sad. Oh, oh, that was actually my best friend, but he was secretly evil or polymorphed or something, and I had to kill him for the sake of peace. Oh. <laughs> or maybe, finally, I've finally taken vengeance for my fallen allies. Father, mother, I've taken vengeance for you. Whatever it is, that's the emotional high point. The whole point of the end of the chapter is to bring closure to that. You've got this big adventure happening in this big world, and so you take all of the emotion from that fight and you put it back into the world. You put it back into the adventure. If the player feels triumphant, you throw them a parade. If the player, if the player feels bitter that they had to kill their best friend, you show that because they made that sacrifice, life goes on for the rest of the world and it becomes bittersweet. If they feel they've finally taken vengeance, let them say goodbye. This is what gives the chapter power. This is what makes the players go, oh my god, this game, it meant so much to me. Everything was so emotionally intense and satisfying. Ah, such a lively world felt real. This is the moment you can make that happen. But if you have some dude in a cloak go up and say, mwahahaha, that chapter was pointless. Nothing you did mattered at all, mwahahaha. Yeah, that's, that's going to ruin things, isn't it? So you don't do that. You might be thinking, well, if I don't do that, how can I connect my chapters? And the answer is, screw off, don't connect your chapters. <laughs> I'm simplifying, but it's important to realize that your chapters are not episodes. The players are still playing. If the player decides that, you know, ah, oh, we finally defeated the, the dragon, the sky dragon, time to go out for for booze with the pirate kings, and the pirate kings are like, yay, pirate king time, let's booze it up. This is not some final cutscene where that's the end of the game. This is something that the players are playing. They might be watching a cutscene and technically not in control, but they're in the game world, and the game world is proceeding, and there's no reason why they would just suddenly stop. So you can give them plenty of moments to allow them to finish investing all of that powerful emotional energy they had from the final fight. The best way to do this is to give them a little bit of free time so that they can do some optional stuff. For example, maybe they want to finish optimizing their ship. Maybe they want to take on an optimal bo uh, you know, optional boss. Maybe they want to do one of those side quests. Maybe they want to date the pirate queen at long last. If you make the end of the chapter have a little bit of wiggle room, then the player will really get to have a sense that they are being gratified. Everything that they were trying to accomplish has been accomplished, and now they are allowed to see it. And you don't force them to do it. You don't force them through very much, because they might not be as emotionally invested as you think, and it can be very easy to become very twee about it. But you let them. You let them play. That's the whole point. They invest as much of their emotional energy as they are capable, and then they are allowed to move into the next chapter. At no point do you simply go, You have finished this episode. You must now begin the next episode. It's just part of them playing. For example, let's say that they decide that they are going to date the Pirate Queen, and she's like, All right, let's go on a date. And they're like, Yay, let's date the Pirate Queen. And so you go out for drinks, and then halfway through the night the pirate queen looks over your shoulder and says oh shit and you look over the shoulder and you see a guy in red but then she grabs your hand and you dash through the streets and you jump onto her ship and it lifts off into the sky and you're like wait you had a flying ship this whole time and she goes yeah but there was a sky dragon obviously i couldn't fly last chapter and you're like oh no let's go sounds like fun congratulations you've opened up a new episode a new chapter there is no break where the player has to stop playing you just roll. What do you mean? We didn't introduce the next villain? We didn't introduce any sort of secrets or compelling things or anything? We just let it go? Yeah, it's an experience. 
the player doesn't have to feel like they are always on top of exactly what's going to happen next. Because it's part of an experience, you don't have to know who the next villain is at the beginning of the next chapter. You just have to know that there is something worth doing. And going on a sky adventure with a pirate queen is pretty high on the list of cool things that you might want to do. There are also lots of other approaches. For example, you can use the puzzle piece approach where you've got you know, the, whole, the whole thing. You've got the entire puzzle solved, except for there's just one little piece missing out of the corner here. So you have your, your emotional, emotional catharsis because everything is solved, but there's just this one little thing doesn't really make sense. Usually this won't lead to the next chapter. Usually it'll lead to the chapter after the next chapter. But this is a great way to have everything go swimmingly, but still leave that little bit of foreshadowing. For example, maybe you're fighting the evil demon, co the evil demon god who is uh, the Stay Puffed Man, but on fire. And you kill the evil demon god and everything is great, right? Well, what if the evil demon god of fire had an icicle sticking through his chest like this that it never melted? You fight him, you defeat him, everything's happy, everything's going great, but you do have to wonder about that icicle, right? There's no need to hammer it home. There's no need to be like, I, NPC B, would like to talk about that icicle that that demon lord had in him. Don't you think that icicle was kind of strange? Yes, I, NPC 3, think that that icicle reminds me of Shiva. Remember when Shiva had ice powers? Yes, I, NPC D, would like to point out that the next episode is about Shiva. You don't do that. You just set it up so that clearly there was something a little bit wrong, and even if the player doesn't notice now, they'll notice in the chapter when you introduce whoever was responsible. They'll be like, oh right, that icicle thing, and everything flows. It's important, at least in my opinion, that this be something that the player can notice and care about. An astonishing number of RPG writers are like, all right, well, you defeated the Demon Lord with all the fire and all that stuff, but I, NPCB, am a little bit confused. I just have one, one question about that Demon Lord. Um, who was doing his taxes? Who fucking cares? Obviously, if you're trying to write a comedy game, the rules are a little bit different. But in general, if you want us to care about something that was behind the scenes, it should be something that the player can feel is tangible, something that the player can care about. Not something like, where is the money coming from, or what happened a thousand years ago. Something they can see. That's the joy of a fantasy game or a sci-fi game. There's so much stuff that you can put into your world. If you want to have an evil accountant, it can be an evil accountant that binds people with magic numbers. And now you've got a demon lord with numbers in his eyes, scrolling through his face, you know, lots of weird stuff. And it can be fascinating, and you can realize it later as a player. You can be like, oh, this is the guy that gave him numbers all across his face. Whatever. Please stop asking who is doing the Demon Lord's taxes. That's not interesting, and it's extremely boring. It's going to deflate the ending of your episode, because nobody cares. Anyway, this is all just my opinion, obviously, but we are going to have to basically write in chapters as RPG writers. We don't really have any other option. We've got to break the story down into bite-sized chunks. So the two basic rules I would give you is to actually use the ends of your chapters as emotional reinvestment, as emotional closure, and also to realize that the end of a chapter is not the end of an episode. The player will probably just keep playing, and if, even if they stop, they'll probably come back tomorrow. You do not have to use super strong hooks. You just have to keep the experience flowing. Okay? Let me know what your opinion is. See ya.